Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Dev Diary. Now lately, I've finally had time to check out a few games from my backlog, one of which was a game called Wall World. Now, it's a fine game, especially for its price tag, but my god, is progression in that game the slowest thing I've experienced in a long time. And this comes from someone who enjoys playing Warframe, which felt like a good reason to make my own version, which brings us to today's video. So before we get into things, remember to leave a like if you enjoyed the video, and subscribe if you're new to the channel, and make sure notifications are on so you don't miss future videos. So, a wall world is broken down into two parts, mining and combat. The player extracts resources from the wall and uses those resources to upgrade their base, to then fend off the occasional wave of enemies. Unfortunately, because it is a roguelike, the process of building up to each run is extremely slow, and upgrades to increase the process are ridiculously grindy. And so the goal is to take Wall World's gameplay and speed it up to make the game less of a slow burn grind fest, and more of an arcadey action experience. And so since our player character is not active in combat, it did not need an object. Instead, it's a struct with variables for just the things that we'll need. This allows us to treat the player like an object and use similar code that we'd normally use to move around and interact with the world. Speaking of which, we're going with a dimensional jumper type of concept where each time the player leaves their base, the world beneath them randomizes. You know, as if teleporting to a new dimension. This is done using a 2D array as a data grid and weighted randomization to determine placement of resources. The data is then used to draw our tiles, which are spread across three different layers. One of those being a pink fog of war. An entry pocket is then generated using a block destruction function, which is also used for the player's laser. The function is pretty straightforward. It checks the given grid space for data, and if there is something to break, begins increasing the tile's damage over time. If this is the first time that the tile is being damaged, it is then recorded to another array for reference. This way we're not checking every grid space for damage, which would be a nightmare on performance. And when the tile reaches max damage, it is removed using another function, which does just that and removes all tile data from that particular space. It also removes the pink fog from any nearby tiles and creates a few particles to pretty the whole thing up. And just in case we needed it, any tiles not damaged for a second are reset, kind of like how it's done in Minecraft. Now, the thing that took the longest to figure out was the player's laser. Since there is no collision line equivalent for tiles, we had to get creative. So a laser endpoint array was used to determine where a laser would theoretically end. We'd then use a loop to extend the length of the player's full beam and stop the moment we've hit a world tile that's not empty, exiting the loop in the process. And this would only happen if the tile it landed on also wasn't covered in fog, which logically speaking would be physically impossible to interact with in a 2D space. In other words, this would prevent our laser beam from accidentally skipping a tile because the collision check somehow defied expectations. And that laser end array would then be used to gauge how long our laser beam had to be drawn. So if we're mining a tile right next to us, the beam would only travel as far as player to said tile, instead of you know drawing the entire full thing Thing at a fixed distance. Which, by the way, when used with GameMaker's 9 Slice feature, makes for a pretty nice beam effect. And that was all I was able to get to for this session. Again, the laser collision required a lot of time to get working right, so we've still got at least a whole other part to do. And while I'm not completely sold on the current visuals for the Dimensional Divide, or really the graphics in general, the concept of dimension hopping felt pretty good. The general speed and urgency that this brings feels so much more my speed. But that is just my my opinion, I'd love to know what you think, especially if you've played Wall World for yourself. So be sure to leave your thoughts and opinions in the comments. And hey, if you'd like to play some previous games featured on the channel or get early access to the weekly videos, subscribe to my Patreon. With that said, brings us to the end of today's Dev Diary, so thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.